Hello all, I am Sai and you are watching the book Dragon. In today's video, I am bringing to you my summary of the second book inside the Pony and Selvan series. My Tamar as well as English summaries for the first book are already out in the channel. I will link both of them down in the description. The Tamar summary for this one is also already out, so you can check that out if you are interested. Before getting into the actual story, I will just tell you about the extra characters whom we see here from book 1 and then we will get into the story right away. Apart from the characters from the first book, the main character whom we follow here is Pungurili who is a sailor woman and she has a very prominent role to play in the series from the second book. After her, we have this minister named Anirudha Brahmarayar who is very close to the king Sundarasura because both of them studied together when they were very young. Then we have this commander of the army called Vikrama Kesari who is from Kudumbalur. Apart from these three characters, the other main character whom we follow here is a woman who cannot speak as well as hear and she resides in Sri Lanka and she is one of the main focus throughout the second half of the book. Now we We'll get into the story of the second book. The second book is far easier to follow compared to the first book because all of the main characters have been introduced to us. At the same time, the narration does not take place in different locations. It takes place in just three different locations but more than half of the story happens only in Sri Lanka. The story starts out with Nambi going to Rameshwaram and meeting Anirudha Brahmaraya because he is his guru. Anirudha Brahmaraya gives Nambi this task of taking a scroll to Arunmuri Varman in Sri Lanka. The news inside the scroll for Arunmuri Varman is to stay in Sri Lanka and not get back to Tamil Nadu as of now. We already saw in the ending of the first book that Vandiya Tevan as well as Parthibendra Pallavar have taken scrolls from Kundavai and Aditya Karikalan respectively asking Arunmuri Varman to come back to Tamil Nadu, specifically to Parayarai and Kanchipuram. Now along with these two scrolls, there is a third messenger taking a different message to Arunmuri Varman asking him to stay there. After this, we focus on Mandiya Tevan's part of the story where we see him heading towards Kodi Karai after getting the scroll from Kundavai. Accompanying Mandiya Tevan is this apothecary's son sent by Kundavai along with him. Both of them reach Kodi Karai and meet this young lady named Pungurili who is a sailor woman. When Pungurili sees Mandiya Tevan, she starts running and he chases her. While he chases her, he gets trapped in a bog and he is saved by Pungurili afterwards. After he is saved, he says that both of them have come in order to go to Sri Lanka to get some medicines for Sundara Sorer as he is not well right now. After hearing this, Pungurili says that two other men with the same reason came the day before and took her brother on a boat and he sailed them to Sri Lanka. So she takes both of them to her house and after reaching there, Pungurili's father secretly tells Vandiya Tevan that Pungurili is the only other person available to sail the boat from Kodi Karai to Sri Lanka. So if she is asked to help right now in the night, she will refuse it. He advises Vandiya Tevan to ask her the favor the next morning. During that night, some conversations happen between Pungurili and Vandiya Tevan. And because of this, Pungurili accepts to take Vandiya Tevan as well as the apothecary's son to Sri Lanka. The next morning when Vandiya Tevan is bathing in the sea, he has kept his clothes as well as the scroll out on the shore. And after seeing this, Pungurili just takes up his scroll and runs away. Vandiya Tevan goes after her and after reaching her, Pungurili gives him the scroll back. But she has read the message inside the scroll before itself. He doesn't tell that to Vandiya Tevan. At the same time, she informs this thing to Vandiya Tevan saying that the apothecary's son who came along with him tried to hand him over to the people sent by the Parve Terriers in order to take him back to Tanjavur as a prisoner. And she says that right now they are in search of him inside the area. In order to save Vandiya Tevan from them, she makes him stay in a cave inside the forest and tells him that when the night breaks, she'll come take him and head towards Sri Lanka in her boat. Just as she said, Pungurili comes back and takes Vandiya Tevan on her boat and travels with him towards Sri Lanka. While going in the way only, she reveals to him saying that she read the message inside the scroll and she knows who Arunmuri Varman is because she has taken him on her boat before. After getting to know this, Vandiya Tevan thinks that she might be someone who's part of someone else's plan and he jumps inside the sea. Since he has this phobia for water and swimming, he ends up fainting inside the water. Pungurili saves him from the sea and takes him to this island called Mayatiba. She makes him stay there and tells him that he'll go to the nearby island and get some news on where Arunmuri Varman is. She goes to the other island named Bhudatiba and there she gets to know where Arunmuri Varman is from this old woman whom we see before and that old woman cannot speak or hear. After getting to know that Arunmuri Varman is in Matupu, she comes and tells Vandiya Tevan about that. She also tells Vandiya Tevan that if he wants to get back to Tamil Nadu in her boat, he can find her somewhere in the same place where she drops him. So Vandiya Tevan is in Sri Lanka now and he heads towards meeting Arunmuri Varman. While all these things are happening in Sri Lanka, there are some other things that are happening in Tanjavur parallelly also. Kundavai who was initially in Parayare has come to Tanjavur because she knows the plans of the Parve Terriers and she does not want the Chola kingdom to come under their rule. So she comes with the reason that she has come for the Navaratri festival and she is going to start this medical facility in Tanjavur just as she did in Parayare and she is to open it during the Vijayadasami day of the Navaratri festival. After reaching Tanjavur, she also gets to know that the Parve Terriers have sent people in order to get Vandiya Tevan who branded as a spy by the Parve Terriers because they say that he is the person who attacked Kandanmaran from the back and Kandanmaran also believes that Vandiya Tevan is the one who injured him. After meeting Kandanmaran and getting to know what has happened, Kundavai gets an idea of what might have transpired and she does not give up her trust on Vandiya Tevan. When she gets to know that Vandiya Tevan is being searched for, she also sees that 
the apothecary son has been taken in place of Vandiyathevan and brought back as a prisoner. While all these are happening, Sendhanamudan, who was the person that protected Vandiyathevan and helped Sendhanamudan, is imprisoned by the Parvetares. So Kundave ends up releasing him from the prison. After doing all this, Kundave wants to put up a show of the reason that she said for coming to Tanjavur, that is to see the Navaratri festival. Since she has come from Parayarai to Tanjavur and she is the beloved princess of the people, they conduct this play in which the historical event of Aditya Karikalan overthrowing Veera Pandian is played. And while watching this, Nandini's face has some kind of different expressions which Kundavai notices and keeps in her mind. The interactions that happen between Kundavai and Nandini are so powerful and they are very difficult to describe in any other language other than Tamil. If you can read Tamil, please do go forward and read the second book. I can say that you can read the second book just for the interactions between Kundavai and Nandini alone because they are extremely powerful always. After seeing the play, Kundavai goes to the Kali temple alone as a woman. I am saying this in specific because during in those days, there was this custom by which women do not go to the Kali temple because the priests sometimes get some prophecies and start dancing. Because of this, the women might get frightened. But Kundave is a princess and there is no one to stop her, so she goes to the Kali temple and no other woman goes to the Kali temple then. When Kundave is there in the Kali temple, there is something which happens in the palace also. So what happens in the palace is, Vanati is not able to sleep during that night, so she just wanders in the corridors. While she is wandering, she gets this voice of a person who is lamenting about something and when she goes and sees, it is the King Sundarasura himself. He is looking at something in the vast distance and talking something like talking to a woman saying that it's been 25 years since she died but still she's been haunting him continuously. When Vanati tries to see whom he's seeing and talking all these stuff, she sees Nandini and Periya Parvetere in midst of a smoky scene. She's not able to comprehend what has been happening and she tries to get out of the place but when she's making her way through the corridor, she just faints there. The next morning Kundavai gets to know that Vanati has fainted and after that she goes and meets her father. Before this, Vanati does not say what all she saw that was happening to Sundara Sora as well as what Nandini and Periya Parvetere were doing. Doing. While Kundavai meets Sundara Sora, she tells her a story which is secret and not to be told to anyone else. In that story, there is this young man in Sri Lanka who is sitting on top of a tree and seeing something that is going on in the jungle. After some time, he hears this sound and sees a bear chasing a woman. After he saves the woman, he gets to know from the woman's father that the bear was actually trying to kill him, but the woman saved him by distracting the bear from him. After this, the woman and this man are together. And after a few days, what happens is the woman gets pregnant and a Chola troop comes from Tamil Nadu and takes the man along with them. Now, this man is Sundara Sora himself. After reaching Tamil Nadu, he is married to Vanamaga Devi as we see in the first book. But this woman whom he has been with in Sri Lanka has also been taken to the palace and she gives birth to her children there and after that she just leaves the palace. She is sighted now and then at different places but there is no concrete evidence of whom she is. While saying this, I should also include one incident that happened in the past in the life of the three siblings Aditya Karikalan, Kundavai and Arunmuri Varman. While they were very young children, one day they were on the boat in the Kaveri river along with their mother and father. Accidentally what happens is Arunmuri Varman falls into the river and and no one notices it. After he's missing for a while, everyone starts searching for him. And while they are going on the river itself, what happens is there is this mystical form of a woman that just lifts the child from the water and hands it down to the king. The king is not able to see whom that woman is. But after giving the child to the king, the form of the woman just vanishes. No one comes to claim any kind of prize for saving the king also after a few days. So everyone comes to a conclusion that it was the river goddess Kaveri herself who saved the child. Hence the child Arunmuri Varman was fondly called by the people as Ponin Selman, which is the title of the series. After Sundara Sora tells the story to Kundavai, he asks her not to let it out to anyone because it might cause some problems for the throne and Kundavai is definitely not going to tell it to anyone because he wants her younger brother Arunmuri Varman to take the throne after her father. While all these things are being done by the protagonist of our story, our antagonist is not idle. After Kandanmaran gets well from the treatment given by the Parvetaraya, Nandini takes him to her side and she sends the scroll to Aditya Karikalan in Kanjipuram through Kandanmaran asking Aditya Karikalan to come to Kanjipuram so that they can come for a settlement. After he comes, she is planning to do something which is not revealed in this book. Periya Parvetaraya does not understand why all these things are being done by Nandini, but since she is doing them, he just keeps on supporting her blindly. After seeing what all has happened in Danjavur, we are getting back to Vandiya Tevan in Sri Lanka. He has reached Madhotam now and after reaching Madhotam, he gets to meet Nambi who has also come there in order to meet Arunmari Varman. After both of them meet, they also get to meet Parthibendra Pallavar who has come from Kanchipuram in order to meet Aditya Karikalar again. And along with Parthibendra Pallavar, there is this Perimbalur Vikramakesari who is kind of the commander of the army. After getting to Madhotam, they get to know that Arunmari Varman is not in Madhotam but has moved to Simmagiri which is another place inside Sri Lanka. So Parthibendra and his group go on a separate way and Nambi and Mandiya Tevan go together. While Nambi and Mandiya Tevan take a separate route, they have a very adventurous journey that is just beautiful. I cannot tell that entire journey for you guys here because the video will get so much long and I might get off track from the story. So I'm not going to tell it here. If you can, please just go forward and read that. I'm sure that you will love it. 
So after going through so many hurdles, Mandir Tevan as well as Nambi reach Simagiri, and there are these two soldiers from an army who come and speak with Nambi alone, telling that there is this person who wants to meet Nambi, and both of them come to a conclusion that it is Arunmuri Varman who wants to meet Nambi. But Mandir Tevan is a bit concerned because he has also come to meet. Arunmuri Varman alone and he has to deliver the scroll because it has been given by Kundavai as the only duty for him. There are two soldiers who come along with one other horse in order to take Nambi alone and both of them take two horses and one horse is given to Nambi. But Vandiya Tevan decides to take a different route and he just pulls the leg of one soldier and gets on his horse and all these people keep going on the horse for quite a long time and after that what happens is suddenly the other soldier who's there on the horse gets down and starts fighting with Vandiya Tevan but no one comes to separate them from the fight. Vandiya Tevan is very brave and valiant so he decides to defeat the soldier first before going and meeting Arunmuri Varman. What happens is the soldier ends up defeating Vandiya Tevan and at that point it is revealed to us that the soldier is none other than Arunmuri Varman himself. Nambi has known this all along but he did not say it to Vandiya Tevan. So at last after all this time Vandiya Tevan as well as Nambi have delivered their scrolls to Arunmuri Varman asking him to get back to Parayare at the same time stay in Sri Lanka respectively. So Arunmuri Varman takes Vandiya Tevan and Nambi along with him and they attend this very huge festival that happens in Sri Lanka that night. After the festival ends, Arunmuri Varman receives this message at the foot of a Buddha statue. According to the message, Arunmuri Varman takes Vandiya Tevan and Nambi along with him and heads towards a cave. And in the entry of a cave, they meet this Buddhist monk who has a fire torch with him and he takes all three of them inside the cave along with him. They travel through the cave and it is very enormous and grand. So after getting into the cave, they see this throne that is shown to them by the monk and he says that the Buddhist monks of Sri Lanka have decided to give the throne to Arunmuri Varman but Arunmuri Varman refuses to become the king there because the duty that was given to him by Sundara Solar was to go and win the war in Sri Lanka but not to take the throne. So he refuses the throne and gets away from that. After getting outside they just stand outside this building under a roof and they are able to see this woman on the opposite side and the stunning thing about this woman is that she looks very much like Nandini. All her features, facial features look like Nandini but she's aged and she's very simple in her dressing. Arunmuri Varman goes and talks with that woman since that woman cannot talk, she uses sign language and Arunmuri Varman completely understands her. After speaking with her, they go away from the space and the roof of the place under which they stood just breaks down and falls. So if they had been there, they would have died easily. After getting away from that place, they stay in the small house. When they are staying in that house, Mandiya Tevan asks Arunmuri Varman about that woman and Arunmuri Varman says a backstory for that woman. While Arunmuri Varman and his army first came into Sri Lanka for the war and there were these bushes near the settlement from which there was a crying sound that was heard continuously. When seen who was the reason for this crying, it was actually this woman and she always ran away when they tried to speak with her. Finally, what happens one day is no one else goes to speak with the woman but Arunmuri Varman alone. The woman ends up taking Arunmuri Varman along with her to a cave and shows Arunmuri Varman some paintings and these paintings actually say the story that was told by Sundara Sora to Kundavai and Arunmuri Varman gets an idea of who this woman is and understands that she is the person who actually saved him as a child. He also shows Arunmuri Varman this very old man who is shivering continuously and from her sign language he gets to understand that there is this kind of fever that is spreading inside Sri Lanka and it is very lethal and can easily kill people. After that incident, each and every time there was a threat for Arunmuri Varman's life, there was the presence of this woman which continuously kept on saving him. So he has become very much used to her. While they are staying in that house, again this woman comes and when they go and try to talk with her, her they get to witness that the house has been set fire right now. The woman tells Arunmuri Varman not to stay in certain places for the night and leaves him there. The next morning what happens in Simagiri is, Parthi Bendran and his crew also come and meet Arunmuri Varman and they have bought Pungurli along with them because she has some news. After getting all these three scrolls delivered to him, Arunmuri Varman is totally confused because he is pulled in three different directions. Aditya Agarikalan wants him to get back to Kanchipuram, Pundavai wants him to get back to Parayari, and Anirudha Brahmaraya wants him to stay in Sri Lanka itself. After all these three big decisions, there is a huge bomb that is dropped by Pungurli. There are these two ships that have landed by the coast of Sri Lanka in a particular place, and those two ships are from the Parve Terriers, and they have this order from Sundara Sora in order to take Arunmuri Varman as a prisoner back to Danjavur. No one wants to leave Arunmuri Varman under the control of the Parve Terriers so they ask him to deny being taken away like a prisoner but Arunmuri Varman refuses to do so because that order has come under the name of his father and he does not want to disrespect him so he chooses to go with the Parve Terriers as a prisoner. The other people also heed to his word but they say that they will come along with him until he boats the ship of the Parve Terriers. While they are making their way towards the coast where the ships are, Vikramakesari who is the commander of the army uses his power and makes a lot of crowd to gather in places through which the king is going. While they are travelling towards the coast where the ships are, Pungurili and Arunmuri Varman alone travel on an elephant because 
Pungoyali is the only person who knows the short route in order to reach the shore easily and all the others travel either via horse or on foot. Arunmali Varman understands that Vikramakesari is doing all these things in order to delay his surrender to the Padavetarayar. So what he does is he has this knowledge of how to behave with elephants. So he makes something to the elephant and makes it behave like it is out of control and everyone is frightened that the elephant has gone astray and taken the prince as well as Pungoyali along with it. But after going a short distance, Arunmali Varman brings down the elephant to the normal position and they travel again. While they reach the coast, they can see only one ship and that ship is totally shattered. They are not able to understand what has happened and during this time only the woman comes again and she comes on an Arabian horse and they are very confused of why there is an Arabian horse and how it has reached there. She takes them to this place by a riverside where many people have been massacred very brutally. There is this captain of the ship that has been shattered alone who is sitting there and that ship belonged to the Parve Terriers and that captain was under the order to bring Arunmari Varman as the prisoner to Tanjavur. After letting Arunmari Varman know all the things that have happened, the captain just dies. What has actually happened is one of the ships was not properly anchored so it just hit the shore and got shattered. After that they were raided by a group of Arabs who came out of nowhere. After letting Arunmari Varman know this the captain actually dies and Pungoyali and Arunmari Varman just stay that one night alone in the coast and the food for them is provided by the women. The next morning what happens is Parthibendra Palavar has come to the same coast where the Parvetarya's ship is said to be and after reaching there they see this one ship alone which is going on in a distance and the people who are actually inside that ship are the Arabs who attacked this army and the two people who were taken by Pungoli's brother to Sri Lanka the day before Vandiyatevan reached Kodikarai. Vandiyatevan is along with Parthibendran's crew when they are reaching the coast but what happens is on seeing the one ship alone that is sailing in the sea Vandiyatevan thinks that Arunmarivarman has been taken in the ship and he wants to reach Arunmarivarman. So he jumps inside the sea and somehow gets to that other ship. After getting into the ship only he gets to know that Arunmarivarman is not there and it has been taken by the Arabs and these two other people. They tie him up and try to finish him off. But Vandiya Tevan somehow escapes and gets to know all the plans of the Parvetarias by Ravidasan. They trick Vandiya Tevan with a deal and they leave Vandiya Tevan alone in the ship and escape in a small boat. Now Vandiya Tevan is totally stranded in the ship as a single man. He does not know how to sail the ship and during this time only a storm also hits the ocean. After Parthi Bendra Palavar and the crew meet Arunmari Varman, they let him know that Vandiya Tevan has actually jumped into the sea and reached the other ship in which he thought that Arunmari Varman was in. Now that ship has been hit by lightning and it is burning. In order to save Vandiya Tevan from the ship, Arunmari Varman jumps into the sea and Vandiya Tevan also thinks that it's better to fall inside the ocean and die rather than to burn in the ship because of the lightning. So he also jumps inside the ocean. Arunmari Varman somehow saves Vandiya Tevan and both of them hold on to some planks and spend the night in the sea itself. Before all these has happened, since Pungoyali's work of getting Arunmari Varman to the coast is over, she is made to leave them. The next morning itself she gets to know about the incident of the storm and she takes her boat to that side in order to help some people who might be stranded inside the ocean. As we saw before, Vandiya Tevan as well as Arunmari Varman are already floating in the ocean grabbing onto their lives and Pungurli is the person who ends up saving both of them. With Pungurli being the savior of Arunuri Varman as well as Vandiya Tevan, the second book ends. So yes guys, that's it for my summary of the book 2 inside the Pony and Selvan series. If you did enjoy watching today's video and found it useful in some way or the other, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends. If you want to get more content from me, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.